there's comments on some of our episodes. I think one is from a geologist who questions, quite rightly, certain aspects of the narrative. I've had a back and forth with him. It's been very positive and helpful. I just want to bring up two possible scientific, admittedly, accounts that could be placed at the same time as this event was supposed to happen. Make of them what you wish. First of all, though, there was a Dr. Mass. I think that's how you pronounce the name. It's M-A-S-S-E. It could be Massey. Mass. Who studied 175 flood myths around the world and ones that specifically mentioned solar eclipses. And by studying and triangulation, he's given a date of about 2807 BC. Does that fit in time-wise with this? Possibly. Some biblical scholars said 2105 BC. So it's within the ballpark. But there was two events that we can talk about that do give evidence of floods. And this is worldwide. The first is the Burkle Crater. It's been dated 3000 to 2800 BC, which fits in with Dr. Mass. What is the Burkle Crater? It was some Russian scientists who discovered off Madagascar, I think it's southeast of Madagascar, a huge crater. This would have been an extinction level event, probably a comet strike so big it would have caused the world's largest tsunami. So big, in fact, that the tsunami that when it raced across the proto-Indian Ocean and hit what we now call Persia would have been five, six hundred feet high at least. There's a YouTube channel called Oz Geographics, and there's videos on this, and it's quite useful to watch. And the evidence is a thing called chevrons, so that the force of water hitting land is so great it causes striations in the earth. Are there evidence of chevrons to prove that there would have been a mega tsunami? Well, yes, in fact, there is. Obviously, in Madagascar, eastern Africa, Persia, and I'll come to that in a moment because we know the Strait of Hormuz quite well, don't we? We do indeed. We've been through it many times on ships. There's even evidence in Western Australia and New Zealand of some strike of water that would have been cataclysmic. Interestingly, because of the position of the strike in the Southern Ocean, the mega tsunami would have gone round the world. It would have wrapped itself and it would have hit South America from both sides. Obviously not at the same time. Which leads me to my first quote. There's a book called Brazil by an author called Errol Lincoln Ayes. And at the very beginning, it talks about the original people of the Amazonian region called the Tupiniquin. Now, there's a couple of names here. Old Mother is a woman in a village. Aronya is a boy who's thinking this through. And this is what the text says. From Old Mother, Aronya had also heard of Monan, without beginning or end, being of all time, who had created sky, earth, birds and animals. Monan, who had witnessed the wickedness of first man and sent Tatar fire from the sky to consume all but Irin Maje. Seeing the destruction of the earth, Irin Maje begged Monan to save it, and Monan had sent a great flood to put out the fires, and from this the waters of the ocean were born. From the descendants of Irin Maje and his wife came the Tupiniquin. He was stirred by Old Mother's stories of the great migrations of Monan's people, after they were allowed to repopulate the earth, moving through forest without end, always seeking land of the grandfather, to which a return was promised. Flood narratives are literally worldwide. So this Burkle crater would have caused a tsunami that hit Persia. It would have then gone through the Strait of Ormuz, up the Gulf, into the Tigris and Euphrates valleys. Now that's where the Fertile Crescent and biblical history begins. Well, that sounds perfectly feasible to me. I see no reason why that couldn't have happened. And when you think of such a cataclysmic event... And if you think of the way that the scriptures are written with all of these subterranean waters coming up, you think of water under pressure, how quickly that can break through rock and the tectonic shifts that that could cause and the tsunamis that that could cause. I mean, we look at what happened to Kaikoura, just north of me here, a few years ago, when we had that massive earthquake, everything was just munted. Roads disappeared and the sea base itself was lifted. You've got further shoreline than you had before. It's just incredible. 